Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to share two updates to the column chart with percentage change. So we had a few great modifications or iterations to this chart come in. Uh, one was submitted by Wayne Edmondson who's a member of our VBA Pro course which uses a macro based solution. It's very cool. And then another one from uh, John Peltier over at peltiertech.com. John's an absolute master with charts so it was cool to see him do an iteration on this as well. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, in those videos, I first uh, in the first one I explained how to create this chart which displays the percentage change between the columns here and it uses these air bars to do that for both positive and negative variances. And then we had some great feedback come in and I created another iteration which I called conditional formatting. And this one uses air bars again, but here we have arrows uh, for the positive and negative changes. And we also have colors uh, for the data labels and the arrows as well. And this solution used a few invisible bars uh, between the bars that you see here with the data for each year uh, to create these positive and negative changes. As you can see, they're not perfectly lined up between the bars here. So Wayne Edmondson came up with a macro based solution that does have the bars, or I'm sorry, the air bars directly between the data bars. And uh, this just uses one invisible bar series. So very similar to the first iteration. However, uh, he has a macro that will move the data labels above and below and also change the colors. So the macro can be run by pressing this button right here, or we can use a worksheet change or worksheet calculate event to automatically run the macro uh, when any data is changed within the worksheet. So I'll quickly jump over to the VB editor here, developer tab, visual basic button, keyboard shortcut, alt F11, and show this macro. So uh, I've put the macro here in this uh, sheet code module, sheet two code module, and we have this uh, worksheet calculate event that's calling the macro. So every time the sheet calculates, uh, that will call the macro. You can also use the worksheet change event here. And uh, then the macro itself is called adjust air bars. And it's a fairly simple macro. It's just going to loop through all of uh, the points on this uh, series here that contains those air bars. And if it's a positive uh, variance, then it's going to put the uh, data label, the position of the data label on the inside end. I'm sorry, if it's a negative variance, it's going to put the data label position on the inside end. If it's a positive variance, then I'll put it on the outside end. So instead of having to manually move the position of the data label, like I showed in the first video, uh, this macro does that for us automatically. And then it also changes uh, the font color here. So it's changing the font color uh, for the data labels to either red or green uh, based on whether it's uh, negative or positive. So again, it's a fairly simple macro, uh, just doing a loop there with an if statement, but I just love how Wayne's come up with a solution here to automate this uh, process and just make this a little bit easier. So that's one and that'll be included in the sample file as well. Now, as I mentioned, we also had a solution from John Peltier over at peltiertech.com and uh, this solution uses an XY scatter chart and a combo chart here with both the column chart and the XY scatter. So if we select the chart here, I'll show you what we mean. We can go to the uh, format tab, I'm sorry, the design tab on the ribbon and we'll uh, click change chart type and that'll bring up the change chart type window and we can see here that we have the clustered column chart type uh, for the revenue bars and then for the increase and decrease we have a scatter chart just a standard uh, scatter chart there and what that allows us to do if we go over to the source data for this chart we can see over here we have this uh, new column with the xy this would actually be the labels for the x-axis here and we have uh, these 0.5 increments which allows us to create a label or a data point I should say between each of the columns over here in the chart. So each of these columns that 0.5 is actually going to create a label here uh, within the chart that's between the columns. So we don't need the invisible bar series in this particular solution. Uh, we can just use the xy scatter instead. And again, we can see that if we select the chart and we go to the uh, format tab 
and then over here on the drop down we can choose the increase series and that will just show us the data point there for any increase or any years with an increase in revenue you can see the data points there and i've made them invisible or change the marker to none so we're not actually seeing the marker but it, we do have error bars off of those data points and it's the exact same technique that we used in video number two with changing them to having arrows at the beginning and then changing the color of the line as well and then also putting the data labels there and changing the font color of those as well. And of course, the nice part here is again, the error bar is directly between the gap width here of the columns. And you can change the gap width of the columns to make them smaller or wider. I currently have it set to 100% to have an equal amount of gap width between the bars and uh, the where the error bars are displayed, which gives it a nice clean look. And uh, I just love this iteration as well. So John Peltier has an entire article where he's explained all of this. I'll put the link right here in the file and in the blog post as well in the description below this video. So you can go check this out. And he explains it step by step how to create this. Uh, so you can create this one and implement it in your reports. And even if you're not going to use this exact chart, I hope seeing these iterations has helped you see how we progress with charts as we're creating them. So I have a sheet here that shows all of the iterations we started, or I started uh, with this example from this chart I saw over on the visualcapitalist.com uh, that showed these air bars here uh, between any positive year changes. I also wanted to include the possibility for negative year changes. So I came up with this chart, which then evolved into this chart here, uh, which just shows some conditional formatting. And then of course we had the solution by Wayne as well, which just kind of cleans it up a bit. And then the solution uh, from John Peltier that uses a different type of chart, but uh, really cleans it up as well. They might make it a little bit easier to implement. And again, the point there is that you won't necessarily get it right the first time or it won't be perfect. And that's completely fine. As you can see, I didn't have it uh, completely perfect the first time. Of course, the solution still works, uh, but we were able to continue to iterate on it and improve it and make it better over time as we gathered feedback from our audience and our readers. And so I highly encourage you to do that as well. Even if your chart's not perfect or you're not sure, uh, the charts themselves are highly subjective in terms of what looks good and what doesn't. So don't be afraid to publish it to your readers or add it to a report or a PowerPoint presentation or something like that and gather feedback and then you can improve it over time. So hopefully this series of videos has helped you see that. And of course, if you have any comments or questions or additional suggestions on how to improve this, please leave a comment below this video. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.